Hi, welcome to this online course. My name is Raluca Cifria and I am an educator since 2014 and I have been working as a nail technician since 2008. My love for painting and the desire to learn as much as possible about art inspired me to follow the courses of the University of Fine Arts specializing in painting. I have also obtained a master's degree in fine arts and multimedia. My goal is to teach you the secrets of painting with color gels and to convey the same passion that I have. In this course, you will learn about color theory, how to mix colors and how to choose them to achieve a great composition. I will also show you how to prepare the nail tips, then we move on to painting the designs presented. If you find these designs too difficult because this is an advanced course, I highly recommend you to practice first the designs from the Blooming Flowers online course. Next, let's watch a preview of this course. Colors are everywhere around us and we, people, can consider ourselves lucky because we live in a colorful world that develops our personality and emotionally stimulates our creative spirit, causes us different mental states, impressions and feelings. Some colors give us strength, others, on the contrary, calm us, some warm us and others cool us. We can see the colors that surround us because of the light. In its absence, we cannot distinguish any color. One of the most important things when making a painting is how we achieve harmony between colors. Regarding the shape of the model, we can paint it correctly, but if we do not know how to match the colors and choose them to be pleasing to the eye, it is not enough. The painting can become either too trivial or too strident, and in both cases, it will disturb the eye of the viewer. A good knowledge of color theory can help you get not only the right designs, but also attractive, pleasing ones, and your customers will be impressed. In this introductory video, I will show you how we can mix colors to obtain a multitude of shades with a relatively small color palette, which will be useful not only in painting, but also when dealing with a client who always wants a color that you do not have. To make it sound better, we inform the client that we can make them a customized color and this will make them feel very important, and we will save both money and space in our drawer. The most important when it comes to colors, whether gels, acrylic paints or watercolors, is pigmentation. We hear everywhere that gels are better pigmented or less pigmented than others. What are the pigments? They are solid, coloring sprayed particles which, when mixed with a liquid, are used as a paint. They are particles that give color. Pigments can be natural or synthetic produced in a laboratory. Natural pigments can be mineral obtained from different rocks, soils, obtained from different plants and others are obtained from insects, for example. Often pigments are toxic, those for painting are not intended for human consumption and you make sure that your clients remember this too. The more pigmented the gel, the more covering power it has and can be more expensive. Cheap gels do not have a high coverage power because they contain a small amount of pigments or can be of poor quality and we notice that sometimes not even two layers of color are enough to evenly cover a surface. Now that you know this, you will definitely be choosing the materials you work with easier. The best way to learn how to mix colors is exercise. As you practice, you will learn to anticipate the result, so please be brave. If you have not tried it so far, let's play with them to experiment. You probably remember from the school drawing classes that we have primary colors, secondary colors, tertiary colors, non-colors, different chromatic contrasts, and to complicate it more, we also have the color wheel which many of you spin back and forth without understanding its purpose. It should do the exact opposite to help us. We will take them all, one at a time, and I hope that by the end of this course you will have a better understanding of how to use colors in your compositions. Even if we do not have pure colors on our painting palette, let's see how can we make different color combinations. 
It is very important that the colors on the palette are placed in a specific order. On the left side, I have the non colors, that is black and white, and at the top, I have warm colors, neon yellow, yellow, pink, neon pinkish orange, red, burgundy. At the bottom, I have some space to mix the green color and continue to add my cool colors. Light blue, dark blue, and violet. In this tutorial, I will show you the technique on a nail tip with a simple design and we will paint some daisies. To paint the petals, I advise you to use a gel with a higher consistency. The technique we use is similar to the oil painting technique a la prima, where the painters used the fact that the oils are drying slower to achieve spectacular results. By painting in the wet layer, the colors combine, but not entirely, and the brushwork is visible. But given that there are so many painting techniques, I will combine more of them in this course to see how we can make the most of the knowledge acquired so far or we can acquire new ones. In order to have an idea of the design, I will make a quick sketch. Here I have the approximate shape of the nail to better understand the positioning of the flowers on the nail tip. First, draw an oval oriented diagonally in the middle of the tip and below another oval oriented on the other diagonal. I attached a picture with a daisy, so please observe the way the petals are displayed around the pollen in the center. The petals are equal in length, but due to the fact that we see it in perspective, the petals in the back appear longer and narrower, and the front ones shorter and wider. This is not a general rule when drawing daisies, they can be seen from many angles, but now I paint what I see in this picture. Paint the stem of the upper flower going behind the flower from below. With light yellow, add lights on the receptacle and the stem and lightly tap it with a 02 round brush to fade the color. In this tutorial, we will paint some tulips oriented diagonally. Apply matte top coat on the nail tip so that the gel adheres better and does not gather in small drops. Cure for one minute. With a round 02 brush, take a small amount of burgundy and make a sketch of the petals. It is very important that we do not cure at this time. Use the shape of the brush to create the leaves. At the top, the leaf is sharp and to achieve this, lightly touch the nail tip with the brush, then drag and press. Paint with the wider part of the brush, the brush widens, this way the leaf will be wider. Cure for 10 seconds. Apply glossy top coat, then cure for 2 minutes. With a simple and short brush stroke, make a small bud between the large and small flower and another bud towards the bottom edge of the tip. 
cure for 10 seconds. On the palette, mix green, yellow, white and some burgundy with the art paint brush. Using the round 02 watercolor brush, dilute a small amount of brown watercolor to make some tweaks behind the flowers. This step is not absolutely necessary, but it offers a plus to our design. You can make very fine twigs that are almost impossible to paint with gels. In this part of the course, I will show you how we can paint a hibiscus flower using the Alla Prima painting technique combined with one stroke. First, we make a quick sketch of the design and please make these sketches too, to better understand the designs. With a 00 thin brush, paint the stamen of the flower with brown gel and the pollen with orange, yellow and very light yellow, then cure for 10 seconds. Pansies are some of my favorite flowers because of their delicacy and their wide range of colors. I think I could paint here another leaf, so I paint it with light blue gel. Add a small amount of transparent green-yellow on the bud, then cure for 10 seconds. Begin to make the fine surface outlines that give the design a delicate 3D appearance. Take care of the bent petals as you apply the outline. The outline part in this case is always towards the inside of the petal. The fine outlines adorn the painting and the thick ones load it and lack elegance. We apply them only where we want to highlight something, not all around the petal. In this part of the course, we will paint some magnolias on a twig. We always start with the central element that is the larger flower. First, we draw a short line, this will be the base of the petals, 
They all end here and from here starts the stem. We draw the first petal longer, wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. Do not exaggerate with the leaves because the flowers bloom first and the leaves appear later. Cure for 10 seconds. Using the 00 cat tongue brush, add a thin layer of yellow glaze over certain white areas. Where needed, add some painting white gel, then cure for 10 seconds. Apply glossy top coat, then cure for 10 seconds. Load the 00 thin brush with a very small amount of white gel and paint a very fine outline on the bent petals. I recommend that after outlining three petals, you cure a little so that the gel doesn't tighten on the glossy surface. Do not outline the petals all around, only where you want to highlight them and always beginning from the top of the petals towards the middle of the flower. This way, the outline will fade gently and more natural. Thank you for watching and good luck with your practice! The last design of this course is an iris, a flower that stands out for its precious appearance and delicacy. In Greek mythology, Iris is the messenger goddess of love. Depending on the color, the iris also has other meanings. The purple iris is a symbol of wisdom and compliments. The blue iris symbolizes faith and hope. The yellow iris symbolizes passion and white iris represents, of course, purity. Also add a lighter blue glaze. You may add any color you wish. Apply a few painting white dots on the pollen of the flower. My designs are ready and I hope you enjoyed it. I recommend that you first watch me painting the designs from start to end and only after that start to practice. You can pause, scroll forward or backward as needed. And, of course, you can watch the course as many times as you want. I recommend that you practice only when you have the necessary mood in a comfortable place. If you need my help, take a clear picture of your work, send it to me and we will discuss the issues in private. After you finish painting the designs, send them to me and I will send you a special certificate.
Thank you for your trust and for choosing me as your educator and I hope you will have a great experience watching my online courses.